inshallah, to begin the program, we're going to welcome our dear brother Ahmad Bazi to recite from the Holy Quran. If you can help me welcome him as well with a loud salat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد الله صل على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير ما يجادل في آيات الله إلا الذين كفروا فلا يغررك تقلبهم في البلاد كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح والأحزاب من بعدهم وهمت كل أمة برسولهم ليأخذوا وجادلوا بالباطل ليضحدوا به الحق فأخذتهم فكيف كان عقاب وكذلك حقت كلمة ربك على الذين كفروا أنهم أصحاب النار الذين يحملون العرش ومن حوله يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويؤمنون به ويستغفرون للذين آمنوا ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمة وعلما فاغفر للذين تابوا واتبعوا سبيلك وقهم عذاب الجحيم ربنا وأدخلهم جنات عدن التي وعدتهم ومن صلح من آبائهم وأزواجهم وذرياتهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم وقهم السيئات ومن تق السيئات يومئذ فقد رحمته وذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات أفلح من أعاد الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد Once again, brothers and sisters, respected Shaykh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah um, Inshallah, before we welcome up Shaykh, just um, a couple of quick announcements um, Next week, inshallah, Friday, we will be um, joining together as well to commemorate the birthday of Imam Rida alayhi. So inshallah, we look forward to seeing everybody um, here again, inshallah. Um, and the second announcement is, again, as usual, um, alhamdulillah, we consider it a blessing that we have all of the, the children and the youth here um, in attendance with us. And this is something that makes us hopeful for the future. Um, so inshallah, we want to just let the mothers know that you know they should feel comfortable and they shouldn't feel um, you know, worried or anything if the children are playing around. 
And if it is the case that the children do need to, you know, let off a little bit more steam and um, release some energy, we do have the live stream running downstairs, and there is a nursing room and a room for the mothers to take care of their kids, inshallah. Um, and it reminds of the uh, incident with Imam Khomeini where he was asked with whom he plans to uh, overthrow the Shah, and he said with the children who are playing in the streets. So inshallah, these children will grow to be the supporters of Sahib al Asri wa Zaman and they will carry the banner of um, Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi. Inshallah, with that, we welcome our dear Shaykh Osama with three loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وارواح العالمين له الفداء رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحل لقطه من لساني يفقه قولي so dear brothers and sisters in islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah i welcome each and every one of you back it's good to have you with us i hope everyone's doing well now of course today is a little different for us normally we would have our good life lecture series but today is a very special day. Today is a different day. Today, we are commemorating the passing of a great man of God, Imam Khomeini. May Allah bless him and raise him with the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim as salam. Salawat, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. I realize that you, brothers and sisters, are the sons and daughters of Imam Khomeini. And we all know that the world is a very different place now, 33 years after his passing. That qiyam that he did then, the reverations are still being felt around the world. Actually, by the grace of Allah, we're now at a stage where we're trying to get the job done. We learned this principle from our Prophet yet last time I spoke, where the Prophet taught us to finish strong. The hadith is this, istitamul ma'roof afdalu min ibtida'ih. It's better to finish strong. You start a good project, but finishing strong is even better than beginning it. So we're trying to finish strong now. We know we're close to the victory still. This is an, uh, an opportunity for me to offer my condolences to each and every one of you. Now, <clears throat> I think before I begin tonight's talk, I'd like us to take a moment to think and then to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've been favored. The blessing that you and I collectively, inshallah, we want to thank Allah for is that Allah gave us the ma'rifah and the tawfiq to commemorate the, the passing of Imam Khomeini. To commemorate. This is a blessing that Allah doesn't give to everybody. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us that tawfiq and we literally, we pray to God that he doesn't take it away from us. Because there were many things we could have been doing today. And Allah granted tawfiq and ma'rifah to be here. We ask Allah that he not take this blessing away from us and we are very grateful for this blessing. Of course, commemorating Imam Khomeini is not something that he needs. When we mention his manaqib, his fadail, or even the dars, let's say durus, that we're getting from Imam Khomeini, those lessons that we're learning from his life, it's not because he needs these things. We need them. 
the remembrance of Imam Khomeini is so great, it reminds me of a dua. One of the lines of our dua is this. We're talking about God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We address Allah in this way. We say Allah is this person. Ya man dhikruhu sharafun lidhakirin. Oh Allah, you are that person whose remembrance is a source of honor and pride for those who remember. Imam Khomeini, brothers and sisters, is someone who is so immersed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've heard me repeat what our great maraja said, where they said, melt in Imam Khomeini as he has melted in Islam. He was so immersed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that remembering him, having the tawfiq together is a source of honor and pride for us. Imam Khomeini doesn't need these things. Now, it's also part of the way forward. As we march and prepare the grounds for the Mahdi, insha'Allah, there's a very beautiful ayat of Qur'an that I'd like to share with brothers and sisters. This is Surah 48, and it's verse number 10. 48, 10. Allah says this in the Qur'an. It's about Rasulullah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajeem. He says this, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ Truly, those who've made bay'ah, the oath of allegiance to you, Rasulullah, he says, these individuals, إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ They have only made bay'ah to God. Those who made bay'ah to Rasulullah have made bay'ah to God. يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ the hand of God, the figurative hand of God, is above those believers who did bay'ah to Rasulullah. Now our leader, Imam Khamenei, said something. It's really deep. We want to, this is part of just right now, just the gratitude part. What did he say? He said that those who made bay'ah to Imam Khomeini have made bay'ah to Rasulullah. Those who've made bay'ah to Imam Khomeini, who consider themselves the sons and daughters of Imam Khomeini, and practically speaking, they've embraced his wilaya, these people have made bay'ah with none other than Rasulullah. The hand of God is over these individuals. The hand of God is over these individuals. Now, there's something, though, that we need to keep in mind. This is still part of the gratitude part, not arrogance, not looking down on somebody, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What normally happens when there's a towering personality? In the time, in the past, Rasulullah, he came. After him, his cousin, the divinely appointed successor, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he came. What happens when Allah favors mankind with these towering personalities? Now, alhamdulillah, Allah gave us the tawfiq. We're making bay'ah. We remember, we consider ourselves the sons and daughters of this great man of God. But what normally happens when Allah favors mankind with these unique personalities? Normally, for many people, one of three things happen. Some people never recognize the personality. They never believe in him. Can you imagine being alive in the time of Rasulullah, knowing him from before he became a prophet? You lived with him, seeing those miracles, and still not believing in him, not embracing him. That happens, one. Number two which is also scary. Some people know that this individual is actually there on behalf of God. This is a divine personality, a special personality. I know in my heart that yes, he is on the right path. He's guiding us to Sirat al-Mustaqeem, but something happens. Some people, even though they know, even though in their heart of hearts, they love that person, 
They decide to play it safe. I love the person in my heart of hearts. I know that they're truly inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but aligning myself with that person practically is a threat to my dunya. And I want to live a good life. Some people know the personality is, but unfortunately, practically speaking, they play it safe. So those are two which are scary. And Allah, alhamdulillah, Allah hasn't tested us with that. But there's a third category. There are some people who know the personality, believe in the personality, embrace the wilayah of that personality. We've seen this in history, by the way. This isn't theory. They know the personality. They know they're on the right path. They embrace the personality. They believe in them. And then, after a certain period of time, they abandon the path. So you and I, when I say gratitude, and I'm addressing myself, brothers and sisters. I'm addressing myself. Inshallah, that's a reminder for all of us. We're grateful that up until now, our heart has still embraced the wilaya of the wali of the time. Up until now. Up until now, we're still marching with the army of the wali of the time. Up until now, we haven't abandoned the truth. We're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then God says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِدَنَّكُمْ If you're grateful, I will increase you. So alhamdulillah, Allah has not made us reject the glorious legacy of Imam Khomeini. And remember, this embracing of Imam Khomeini is not real, is not true, unless you also embrace and follow the wali of the time. You can't be somebody who made bay'ah to Rasulullah in his lifetime, and then when Ali ibn Abi Talib comes after him, you say, well, I don't want nothing to do with it. You never embraced Rasulullah. So inshallah, Allah keep you and I, and we make this dua from the bottom of our hearts, People who want to continue to live free. Not to go back to willingly being slaves. Dhilla. Not having karama. Let me mention this hadith from Amirul Mu'mineen. This is a principle. The Imam teaches us this. He says, Al mawtu fi hayatikum maqhoorin. Death, true death, is when you embrace being a slave. I'm not going to live with dignity. I'll be a second class citizen. I don't have the right to raise my head and to live with the karama that God himself has given me. I'm a slave. If somebody does that, the imam says, this is moat. On the other hand, there are some individuals who will stick with the truth. The Imam says, Wal hayat, life, fi mautikum qahirin. Life, true life, is when you say that I will live and be martyred, embrace death, but I'll live with dignity. I'll live with dignity. Imam Khomeini brought dignity to the ummah. I'm going to mention some of the lessons that we get from this man. It's important for us to remember these blessings of Allah and then finally to see, well, what was his legacy for us? And how do we slowly take steps to become like Imam Khomeini? So what did Imam Khomeini do for us? Salawat, please. There are certain values, Islamic values, Islamic principles. What Imam Khomeini did was he made those values, he revived them. They were there before. I'm going to mention the ayat, I'm going to mention the hadith. They were there before, but then Imam Khomeini embodied them. He stood for them. 
what before was a discussion, what before was theory, what was before in the books, it's different when we saw it enacted. Once we saw it enacted, it was then easy to emulate. They have a saying that they say in Farsi, that once you fixed a puzzle, once you fixed it, something was a mystery, something was a puzzle, once it's complete, once it's over, then it's easy. The challenge is to bring it to life. And that's what Imam Khomeini did. I'm going to give some examples. For instance, Islam teaches us, Islam of Rasulullah, Islam teaches us that Islam is supreme. The supremacy of Islam. Not that we want to sit at the table. Not that our whole hope is to stop Islamophobia so that we can just be treated like human beings. No, Islam is supreme. Hadith. Al-Islamu ya'lu wa la Islam is supreme to everything. And nothing is better than Islam. Islamic principle. Taught by Rasulullah. What happened? Some brothers and sisters, some of you are younger. You don't remember the days before Imam Khomeini. What did Imam Khomeini do? How did he change history? What were we like before? Why are we so close to the victory once we went back and embraced our Islamic principles? Remember, they had divided the world into two. They were the mustad'afeen, the weaklings, those who would get bullied, those who would be trampled, those who would be taken advantage of. And then there were the first world, the true leaders. Some people, people like you and us, some people had accepted being third class from the third world, second class citizens, used to having people talk down to them and being treated like animals. This had happened before Imam Khomeini. Things are different now. You and I will never go stand for that. But how did it start? I want to give you some examples. Because what we were doing was seeing the Imam do this and then we saw our own strength. One example. This example, context is important. The imposed war is over. 200,000 shohada. Iran didn't apparently, it didn't end the way that they wanted, right? In the end of the war, it didn't end the way that it wanted. It was World War III. And Iran had resisted for eight years. Finally, for certain reasons, Imam de determined that this is the responsibility, and he said that now we're going to have a peace treaty. Imam wrote a letter to the leader of then one of the, one of the kingmakers. There was the Soviet Union at that time. There were two main powers, one America, one the Soviet Union. Imam wrote a letter to Gorbachev. And in that letter, he wrote him and he explained to him about changing his whole way of life and thinking. Imam Khomeini, right? From the other way, the third world, second class citizens, and Imam Khomeini is giving him this elite advice, special advice. This is a video, you can see it. So Iran, apparently they have not, the war didn't end that they wanted, the way that they wanted. Apparently you would think Iran's weaker. So what happened? So now the Imam Khomeini is sitting there and the representative of Gorbachev comes. And Imam Khomeini has written that important letter. Imam Khomeini is sitting there, important advice. Imam Khomeini is listening through an interpreter and he sees that the man tries to give the normal formalities. 
they haven't taken the letter of Imam Khomeini seriously. Right there in the session, Imam Khomeini tells that man, he said, I tried to introduce you guys to the higher realities. He starts to scold him. He says, I knew you guys wouldn't get it. And then right there, Imam Khomeini gets up the, the, the you should see the video, you see the, the, the foreign minister. He just gets, he doesn't even shake the hand of the Tawhut, he just walks out. Al Islamu Ya'lu, Wala Islam is supreme. I'm advising you. When you see somebody like that, then they give strength. There's a story they tell, inshallah, it's not true. They said once there was this little girl. And the little girl was in a classroom, and the classroom was full. The teacher was a secular atheist. And she sees all these little kids there. Little kids, she's in charge. But there was a little girl. The little girl was a Muslim. Her name was Maria. So the teacher said, I'm an atheist. She just asked the kids, who's an atheist? And all the kids raised their hand, but not Maria. Maria was just sitting there. So she turned to Maria. She said, how come didn't, you didn't raise your hand? She said, because I'm not an atheist. She said, what are you? She said, I'm a Muslim. She said, why are you a Muslim? She said, well, my mother and father, they helped me to know God. I became a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. The teacher was so angry. She said, so what about if your mother and father were morons? Then what would you be? The little girl just smiled. She said, if my mother and far father were morons, I'd be an atheist. <laughs> Dignity, karama, standing for the truth. Kufr to the ta'ut is a fundamental, these ayat of the Quran, a fundamental principle in Islam. But we needed to see it enacted. What does God say in the Quran? We all have this ayat memorized. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْتَاغُوتِ The person who does kufr to the ta'ud, وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ And believes in Allah. فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى This person is holding fast to the firmest handle. We all heard before that Abba Abdullah taught us kufr to the ta'ud. He taught us. He said this. وَمِثْلِي لَا يُبَعِعُ مِثْلَهِ Someone like Hussein will never make bay'ah to someone like Yazid. Never. Strength of Islam. Imam Khomeini. Again, I want to show you, tell you a story. This is from the beginning. The life of Imam Khomeini needs to be studied. From the beginning. The revolution needs to be studied. The 15 years he was in exile need to be studied. How difficult it was. The dark times, that needs to be studied. It gives hope, brothers and sisters. Now, Imam Khomeini. Imam Khomeini at this time, this is in the beginning of the revolution. The Shah had his commandos storm a school, a hausa, faithiyya, next to the shrine of Hazrat Ma'asuma. He had them storm that school. They attacked the unarmed hausa students. They were flinging them off the roof. It was complete destruction. Commandos. A few days later, Imam Khomeini gave a fiery speech. You see, the head of the Savak, and I've, some of you have heard from me a little bit about the Savak, the intelligence organization that was the muscle behind the Shah, and how savage they were to the brothers and sisters, the Mu'minin and Mu'minat. What did they do to them? At that time, the head of the Savak was a monster named Colonel Molevi. He was the person who personally led, had the commandos go in there and do all that destruction, throwing those people off the rooftops. Imam Khomeini, when he gave his fiery speech, he mentioned Molevi, the colonel. But he didn't want to mention his name, as if he was too nudges to even mention his name. He said, I won't even mention the name of that person. He said, unless I give the order for them to cut his ears off. 
cut his ears off, not literally cut his ears off, in Iran, when they're going to teach you a good lesson, Imam Khomeini with no power. This is the beginning of the revolution. They're being crushed. They're throwing them off the rooftops. This is the beginning. Strength. Kufr to the ta'ud. Imam Khomeini sitting there in front of the students. He said, no, I won't mention that man's name unless I give the command for them to cut his ears off. Two days later, the Sabaq come and they arrest Imam Khomeini. They take Imam Khomeini into solitary confinement. So Imam Khomeini now, solitary in confinement. And now that they're completely in control, the same monster who led the attack, Colonel Mawlavi, he comes to the prison cell. Imam Khomeini, solitary, no help, no support. So he thinks now Imam Khomeini is broken. He comes to Imam Khomeini, he said, Allah, have you given the command to cut anybody's ears recently? Imam Khomeini looked him up, looked dead into his eyes. He said, it's still not too late for me to give the command. Imam Khomeini was some, his bravery, brothers and sisters, some of us, we weren't a lot legendary. Legendary, this man. The focus of Imam Khomeini, brothers and sisters, was on building human pillars. Before the Imam arrives, you and I, we need to work on ourselves so that we become the human pillars. We also have to create a situation and where others can also be trained to be the human pillars, those individuals. Who embrace the message. Salawat, please. Are we good? Salawat, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. What was Imam Khomeini trying to do? Imam Khomeini believed that the true victory was in creating, becoming the human pillars for the Imam. More important than outward victories, more important than buildings, more important than anything were the human pillars. You see, when simple people look at the Anbiya, average Muslims look at the Anbiya, and they're looking for the mu'ajiza, the miracle of the Anbiya, simple common people look for spectacular things, like the Prophet splitting the moon. And this is a mu'ajiza. They look at these things. Nabi Saleh, when he made the red-haired camel come out of the mountain. Normal people, look at this, very, very impressed. The true miracle of the Anbiya was something else. The true miracle of the Anbiya was building those human pillars. More important than anything. There was a major operation in Iran called Tariq al-Quds. This operation was a game changer. A game changer. Alhamdulillah, believers happy, rejoicing. What Imam Khomeini said was that the true victory is training the youth. The victory of all victories is training the youth. Human pillars. Individuals like Shahid Qasim Sulaimani, Shahid Abu Mahdi al muhandis these people were the true miracle of Imam Khomeini. And you've seen what they did, and so many others. How do we have Islam today? The focus of Imam Khomeini was on this, creating individuals who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fiercely loyal to Ahlul Bayt, understood the mission, embraced it, more important than any outward victories. Next. Salawat, please. If Islam's teachings are embraced fully, I'm going to share the ayat of Quran. But if there is a mu'min or mu'mina who fully embraces the teachings of Islam, the wilaya of Allah, wilaya of Ahlul Bayt, 
this person who fully embraces the teachings of Ahlul Bayt becomes a giant killer. The tarbiyah of Sayyidu Shuhada, the tarbiyah of the Anbiya, the tarbiyah is one that takes an average individual, someone who others may write off, and that wali of Allah can see your true potential, your true talent. Others may not believe in you. And as the words of Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, the job of the Anbiya was to unearth the buried intellects. You have talents. You have abilities. The job of the Nabi is to unearth those talents, those abilities. Someone like Nabi Dawood, Nabi Dawood, if you look in the ayat of the Quran, if you look in our ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, because for us he's the example of the giant killer. Nabi Dawood goes over and defeats Jalut, right? Goliath. If you look in the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, you see that they say Nabi Dawood was short. Wasn't huge. Goliath, that beast, I don't know how big he was. Short. They say that he was a shepherd. And that actually when his brothers went to go over and take on Goliath, they left Nabi Dawood home. They're thinking he's the youngest, he's small. Right? His family didn't see him as a giant killer. Allah did. Allah did. What happened? Allah created a situation where someone like Dawood, the talent that he had, came out, expressed itself, and he became the giant killer. The tarbiyah of Islam does this. Other people may be written off by their families, but if they get embraced the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, each individual becomes a giant killer. Now we're going to move a little bit to the tarbiyah of Imam Khomeini. First, let's look at the verse of Quran, though. The verse of Quran, and in Farsi, what happens is the beautiful thing about Imam Khomeini is that he did this for a nation. There's one person who teaches five individuals. Alhamdulillah, that's good. There's another person who trains a village, trains a city. Another person trains a country, a nation, and makes them into giant killers. With Imam Khomeini, his effect has been global. The students of Imam Khomeini, one of them is Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah, one of them, right? Train people to become giant killers. Example, during the imposed war, one of the big battles was a battle to recover a city called Khuramshar. Very difficult battle. Very, almost impossible. The military experts told Imam Khomeini, they were like, we're, don't take, they wanted him to, they wanted to bring his expectations down. They see on the ground, it's too impossible, it can't happen. They told Imam Khomeini, don't expect victory right now. We're resisting, we're trying, but don't expect Victory right now. Imam Khomeini told them, it depends how much tawakkul you have. How much you trust in God. You see, Imam Khomeini trusts in Allah at all costs. I'm going to mention later what the leader said about Imam Khomeini once we get to the secret of Imam Khomeini. He literally believed when you and I, we said, Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. God can do all things. Imam Khomeini literally believed that. He told these, the military experts, they said, well, don't expect victory right now. It can't happen. He said, it depends on how much tawakkul you have. Don't you know, those people who were the students of Imam Khomeini, the battle got to a sage where there were 700 of the mu'mineen resisting, and 15,000 in the city. And they went in. They won. The people literally standing in lines. God controls the hearts. After that spectacular victory, where the believers now, maybe they might start to think it's us. 
Imam Khomeini gave a reminder. You see, Imam Khomeini didn't want anybody to get the Hunayn syndrome. And the Battle of Hunayn, that's the first time that we Muslims had great numbers. 12,000 people. For us, who started with 313, many of them just had sticks to be able, now 12,000 people? And the battle, Hunayn is one. We, talked, we didn't get a chance to really talk about it when we were talking about the legacy of Imam Ali. But the believers, Islam was almost lost. The numbers did nothing. As soon as Imam, they came back from that stunning victory, Imam Khomeini was like, don't get arrogant. It's all God. Now, the legacy of Imam Khomeini, brothers and sisters, was that we, his sons and daughters, we should, wherever we are, build resistance communities. Wherever Allah takes us, we should build these resistance communities. Individuals are trained. They become ibad rahman They embrace Islam's teachings. They learn to live as insan. That was his legacy. That for all of us, all over the world, that we do that. Now, let's go finally to what's the secret of Imam Khomeini. Imam Khomeini who changed history. Imam Khomeini who single-handedly, his qiyam, we're still benefiting right now. We're not even there yet. We're almost there, inshallah. What was his secret? I want to share some of the verses of the Quran. These are practical reminders for all of us. Imam Khamenei talks about his secret, the secret of Imam Khomeini. He says, I take God as my witness. Allah Shahid. I take God as my witness. I have never seen or heard of anyone who believed in the promises of Allah and the goodness of God as Imam Khomeini did. This is a weighty statement. Imam Khamenei, himself mujtahid, himself someone who studied the lives of ulama. He said, I haven't seen in the contemporaries or read, heard about anyone who believed this much in the promises of God, in the goodness of God. You see, the hadith tell us that this is actually one of those tests. This separates the men from the boys. How much do you and I believe God's promises? Hadith. Mirul Mu'minin tells us this. He says, La yastuqu imanu abdin. The faith of a servant, of an abd of Allah, he says, is not true. Hatta until yakun bima fi yadillah subhana awthaq minhu bima fi yadih. The faith of a believer, a mu'min or mu'mina, an abd of Allah, is not real, is not true. La yasduq, unless the person believes more and what is in God's hands than what is in his or our own hands. Separates the men from the boys. That was the secret of Imam Khomeini. He literally believed we serve a good God. He'd never panic. He'd never get worried. Because he literally, I, I'm going to share some of the ayat of the Quran. God says in the Quran, Surah 67, verse number 29, Qul huwa rahman Say, Ya Rasulullah, say, He's the merciful. Serve a good God. Amanna bih. We believe in Him. Wa alayhi tawakkalna. And we rely on Him. We serve a good God. He's fair. He sees our situation. He cares about us. He has power over all things. Qul huwa rahman Maybe I'm in a difficult situation right now. But I serve a good God. He's on my side. Allah waliyul ladhina amanu. God is the wali of the believers. Yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila nur He takes them out of darkness into light. Imam Khomeini believed this from the bottom of his heart. This makes patience easy. If you believe you serve a good God, he's watching, he sees, he cares. 
The stuff you can't even explain to anyone else, God knows. Ayat of Quran now. 48, 52. God says this. Wasbir li hukmi rabbik. Be patient. Wait for the decision of your Lord. He says, فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا You are right before our eyes. I'm watching. I care. I know. I have power over all things. I control the hearts of people. Sometimes what happens, what keeps us from experiencing Allah's best is that we rush. We can't be patient. God says, وَاسْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكِ Be patient. God's going to take care of it. Sometimes we rush. It stops us from experiencing God's best. I heard a story that inshallah is not true. They said once these four individuals were on an airplane and the airplane started to go down. The pilot saw the airplane was on fire. He came into the back of the airplane. He said there's only three pa pa uh, backpacks, three, I'm oh, sorry, three parachutes and the plane's going down. And in the plane was a very intelligent scientist, the smartest man in the world. Also, there was a doctor. Also, there was a little girl. And there was an old man. So they're looking at each other. There's only three parachutes. The smartest man in the world said, the world needs me. I've got to take one parachute. And he jumped out. The doctor looked at the other two and he said, you know, I'm a doctor. My patients need me. And he jumped out. The old man turned to the little girl. He said, little girl, you can, you take the parachute. I've lived my life. It's okay. I'll go down with the plane. And the little girl said, it's okay. Actually, there are two parachutes left. The smartest man in the world jumped out with my pack back. Be patient for the decree of Allah. You're right before our eyes. Ayatollah Bahjad said it best. He said, if we trusted Allah as much as a small child trusts their parents, our problems would be fixed. Patience is easy. We realize that same good God He's the only gatekeeper. As Allah says in the Quran, rizqukum. Your rizq is in the heavens. Lahu samawati wal the keys of the heavens and the earth are in God's hands. We ask Allah to accept what was said and heard in His way and to make us the true sons and daughters of Imam Khomeini. We end with salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أفلح من أعاد الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد We thank everybody again for coming out and we leave you with the words of Ayatollah Shaheed Dastaghib Shirazi who said من لم يعشق الخميني لا يمكنه أن يعشق المهدي Whoever is not in love with Imam Khomeini then it is not possible that they could be in love with Sahib al-Asri wa zaman al-Imam al-Mahdi. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that love and that wilaya. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iza waqa'ati al-waqi'ah. ليس لوقعتها كاذبة خافضة رافعة إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هباء منبثا وكنتم أزواجا ثلاثة 
فأصحاب الميمنة ما أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشأمة ما أصحاب المشأمة والسابقون السابقون أولئك